Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 13 of Breaking the Fourth Wall. Week 13, episode 13, whatever you want to call it, season 3. I am Junior Ruiz, the host of Breaking the Fourth Wall, alongside a special co-host this week, David A. Bloomquist Jr., the mouthful. David, how you doing? Good. How Thank you doing? Thank you again for being on the show. Thank you for inviting me back, back. Yeah, this was a hassle. <laughs> Anyhow, um, as we reported last week, for those that don't know, David Sanchez is no longer a part of the show. He got a promotion at work, and he is now like doing his thing. Props to you, David. You know, Much love from Comics Remix and from all the fans. We're going to miss you. But uh, you got to do what you got to do, man. Follow your passion. So David is filling in for these uh, last week and this week. And next week we'll have somebody else. Because I'll be tired of looking at you by then. <laughs> Until I come in and get my books. And then yeah, you'll have to David, see me. David again. was contractually obligated to be. So I had to look at his face. I don't have to look at you. <laughs> Anyways. Just every two weeks. Yeah, that's, that's enough. But you bring snacks. So snacks and toys. Yes. I let you slide. You brought me cookies today. Yes. You're and sucking I brought, up. And I, and I brought you your shell razor. Ah, you brought me my remote control shell razor and a Miz action figure. Yes, Miz. I, sh I probably shouldn't have even mentioned that because that just kind of killed everything. Yeah. Like, I bought you this, this, and this, and the Miz. Ah, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, let's move right into it. Doctor Strange has now, uh, officially now has a director tied to it, and it's Scott Derrickson. Do you know who Scott Derrickson is? No. He directed the horror movie Sinister. Have you seen that? Yes. Okay, what did you think of that? I liked it. I'm a, I'm a horror fan. So, okay, so, with with his with him directing that movie, because I haven't watched it. So with him directing that movie, do you think his style or possibly could translate into a proper Doctor Strange flick? 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 Movie? Flick? I think so. Okay. You know, because it... I always look at horror and... Domestics, mm -hmm. yeah, kind of. They're kind of the same because they deal the with otherworldly uh, um, elements and stuff like that. Yes, so I think I think it'll do fairly well. I'm excited, you know, in this day and age with the special effects that there is it's, out there, and I mean, looking at the Constantine trailer, if they can do that for what they're gonna do for TV, right? Imagine what Marvel what pull out of their ass for, for a Doctor movie. Strange. Oh my God, that'd be great. More than they did for the Doctor Strange two-hour TV movie. I remember that. <laughs> I remember when the Sci-Fi Channel first launched and, and they gave it. a Marvel movie marathon mm -hmm. and I stayed up there. Luckily, it was during the summer. So I had my VHS tapes ready. I was I was recording the oh, Spider-Man yeah, movies, I did, I did the man. Captain Americas. Doc Strange came on at like 2 a.m. and I fell yeah, asleep. The, the TV, and, um, TV movies of Captain America. Yep. Red, with Red Brown. Yeah. Yes. Yes. See, I, I remember Red <laughs> Brown. I actually own that in my DVD collection. So Doc Strange with Scott Derrickson attached, you think I have some potential? Yeah, I think so. Good. Better than better than Ant Man. Ant Man that we discussed <laughs> last week. <laughs> well, keeping with the horror things, I, I mentioned this to you off camera. Rumor was that they for season five of The Walking Dead. Is that what it is? That's coming up five. Yeah. Glenn is supposed to bite the bullet. I don't like that. There was reports <laughs> of the actor, Stephen... Help me out here. You're good with names. Um, I want to say it starts with a Y. Yang? Yang. Yang. Yeah, that's Stephen what I was Stephen Glenn from Walking Dead. Um, there's been reports coming off the set that anybody who wasn't directly involved with that specific uh, filming mm -hmm. were asked to leave. It was a closed set. And uh, at wow. the end of filming, he was shaking hands and telling people he had a lot of fun and basically saying his goodbyes. So That sounds like, you know, Glenn's... Yeah. That so I'm not looking forward to. That'll be uh, the big season five shocker if they decide to go that route. And this report actually is true. I'm behind on watching it, you know, but I do I, I keep up with that's, what's going that's on. That's one show that I'm current with. I, I do not miss The Walking Dead. Of course, you know, we have uh, Glenn died in the comics. So I don't know if you knew that, because I know you're behind in your reading. He in died. Issue 100, um, Negan killed him, bashed his okay. head with a bat. So it wasn't a zombie or anything that did him, and he just got bashed to death with a bat while everybody had was forced to watch. Damn. You got to read The Walking Dead. I got, I got it. Yeah, last issue I read of The Walking <laughs> Dead was 76. Wow. Yeah, yeah. You're way behind. I'm way behind. But moving on from there, Robot 6 from uh, CBR, Comic Book Resources is reporting that a, there there are real life superheroes. A couple seasons ago, David and I reported about the Batman in Brazil. Okay. So there's a group. They go by the Rain City Superhero Movement. Okay. I've never heard of them. And um, they're real life superheroes. 
Um, the name of the, the the guy who put the whole thing together's name is Phoenix Jones. Uh, that he's is a his fame. Real name? Yeah, oh, I don't know. It's, that's <laughs> what they were reported. He's a famed costume activist, and he is the founder leader of the Rain City superhero movement. That's a mouthful. Yes. And uh, recently disbanded the group due to uh, members not cooperating properly, like not giving their IDs to the cops, uh, using extreme measures, carrying brutal weapons, kind of stuff you read about in the comics. Yeah. You know? So he disbanded the group. And then put it back together again about a week later with only about five or six core members. And uh, the whole thing is that um, he only reformed it days later. With more, but they're going to pay more attention to um, the physical fitness aspect of okay. the group. What you would think is like, let's see, I'm running around rooftop to rooftop. I'm fighting, you know, muggers and whatever have you. You got to be in shape, dude. I ain't. Round is a shape, but you're not going to fucking catch me running after anybody unless yeah. it's a life or death situation they threaten my family. You know, it's like kind of a no-brainer that the first thing you would have did was pay attention to the physical. But then again, I mean, with the stuff that's around today, you know, why couldn't you just like, okay, I'm the taser guy and I'm running around tasering people. And bam, I'm a superhero, you know. There it is right there. I'm pulling up the link now, people, so I can have more details for you. And as unprofessional as I should have been, I should have been more prepared. So I apologize. In the meantime, just stare at Dave. Because <laughs> I got a slow-ass computer. Jeez, thanks. Let, let people stare at me. They fucking stopped watching five minutes ago. Yeah. They're like, oh, this guy's on there again? Shh. Yeah. Where's the fat guy? Stop giving us this guy. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. That's okay. <laughs> I'm just with you. I know. <laughs> I, All right, put so up, I put up with them for two years. I can still put up with them now. As my computer loads, because it's, it's extremely slow. Here we go. Look, it came up, as I said that. All right, so the article, as we're done blabbering over here, says, uh, and I'm going to read it verbatim, okay? Being a real-life superhero just got a little more real for a couple of Seattle-area vigilantes. There you go. They're in Seattle. That's why you haven't heard of them. Okay. Famed costume activist Phoenix Jones, founder and leader of the Rain City superhero movement, disbanded the group in late May, only to reform it days later, only with more attention paid to the physical fitness of the building vigilantes, budding vigilantes, excuse me. In a recent interview with Seattle's King 5 TV, he said, the area superhero community had become watered down by the influx of new members, some of whom employed unethical tactics, carrying legal, illegal weapons or refusing to give police their identities, who weren't so super when it came to uh, the physical exertion. Instead of culling those members, Jones disbanded the team as it, as, as it was excuse me, and reformed it with only a select few, five to be exact. I'm going to go out there with most... I'm going to go out there with the most equipped, most protected, smartest team with the best tactical decisions I can, regardless of what that cost me personally, Jones told the television station. Rain City Superhero Movement dis disassembled? Kind of. Jones said previous members are welcome to apply, but they must, according to King 5, meet his requirements for superhero activism, like five pull-ups and 25 sit-ups in two minutes. Okay, I'm out. There's a video. <laughs> um... That's the guy. Okay. Do you guys see the guy? That's the guy. Yeah. It's okay. Interesting. So that's what we have going on in our world. <laughs> Not a knock against it. You know what? No, in, in all seriousness, anybody that's going to put on a costume or whatever, I mean, that's the most typical thing. You know, you're raised, well, superheroes wear costumes, so it makes sense, you know? Right. If you want, even cops. To a sense, and, and firefighters, you know, they wear costumes. Well, not costumes, but they, they wear uniforms. uniforms. Yeah. So in a sense, this is their uniform. It just happens to, to look a lot more uh, like a super animated. Hero. Yeah. So you know what? But for them, nobody's asking them to do it. For them to go out on a limb and say, you know what? I am going to protect my community, you know, the way I know how, the way I think is comfortable, the way, you know, I find exciting. More kudos, more props to you, dude, because seriously, half the people in the, more than half, I mean, you don't see people around here doing that shit. You don't see okay, people no, in New York doing that shit. I stand around and watch, watch it happen. Yeah, no, like I, like me, <laughs> <laughs> like you last night. Yeah, well, last week. Come on, movie magic, man. <laughs> Anyways, um, but no, props to you guys, man, for doing this, helping keep your uh, community safe. Maybe this is the start of something. Maybe this is like the real life version of the Kick Ass movie. You know? Yeah. You never know. Um, if it inspires more people to go out there and do right, and it actually does help to stop and. Regardless of how you look at it, some, you know, mugger might be like, well, those guys are fucking crazy. 
dressing up. I am not robbing nobody today. Then, you know, guess what? They just prevented some crime. So right. kudos to them. Seriously, just be careful. God bless. Um, funny thing, moving on to uh, superheroes and stuff <coughs> and low expectations, Hasbro is very disappointed with the court, the uh, the the recent sales of some of their toy lines, such as Amazing Spider-Man Two, such as uh, the Captain America Winter Soldier stuff, as well as the new Transformers Four stuff. Why? <laughs> okay, let's clarify, shall we? I, I I'm, I'm just being no no no. I, I totally right know. I, I understand. But I know that. I do but know let's, why. For the viewers, let's clarify why. First of all. When we say Spider-Man and Captain America, we're not talking about the Marvel Legends. Right. We're talking we're, about the more, the stuff aimed for the kids, little three and three quarter versions um, that, as a collector, I did not even bother picking up. I think I you picked up like one or two. I pick up the Skrull. Uh, Skrull. Falcon and Red Skull. Yeah, right? Falcon and, and Red Skull, which to me were the decent two out of those. You didn't think Widow looked good? I thought Widow looked decent. Wait, yeah, yes, Widow did too, because I did, I got those three. I didn't get the, the Cap, um, the cap was like total total disappointment. Mm. So, says the New York Post has published an article analyzing the toy line sales. Um, by the way, I am reading this from the AllSpark website, AllSpark.com for Transformers news. Uh, the New York Post has published an article analyzing the toy line sales for action figure lines dedicated to this year's big blockbusters at the movie theater. More specifically, The Amazing Spider-Man 2, Captain America 2, and Transformers Age of Extinction. The results aren't so good for Hasbro. It seems the sales are fairly low across all three brands. For a Transformers Age of Extinction toys, which have been on shelves for just under a month, which is very true. I remember you were in here when they were coming out, and I was just like freaking out that I had to go buy them. I had to go right. buy them. I go to the store and that weekend. And he sends weekend. me to the store to go go <laughs> get them or let them know what, what they're like. or. And then so I get to the store that weekend with my buddy Lambert, and we get there, and he's like, so what are you grabbing? I'm like, not a damn thing. These things are horrible. Neon Dinobots. Whatever. It's just, yeah, I didn't. So and anyways, I don't collect Transformers, and I didn't like them myself. So, like I said, these toys have been out for about just under a month. Uh, the numbers are cited as being nearly 50% 50, 50 below the sales for Dark of the Moon figures. Dark of the Moon, I, I grabbed as many as I could. I still need a few, but I've, that line is like 90% complete for me. Okay. I, yeah, I was just like, wow. And, you know, even the Dark of the Moon stuff you found, after a while, you can find them at like Family Dollar and Five Below. Actually, I picked two of them up from Five Below, two of the later ones. Um, you may actually go looking for figures there. They don't have a whole lot. It's I once in a great while. Yeah. They got some Star Wars shit. Uh, yes. uh, during the same... Uh, it, see, you fucked me up now. Uh, the sales for the Dark Knight Moon, Dark Knight. Look at, God damn you, Dave. <laughs> uh, anyway, skipping ahead. My fault is that you get Dark Knight yeah, out yeah, of yeah. Dark of the Moon. The reason, according to the article, is action figure fatigue. What? From brands such as Marvel and Transformers that have released so much product over the past few years that children's toy boxes are already packed full of the older action figures, giving them very little reason to want the new ones. The article supports this claim by pointing to the healthier sales numbers for the Mattel's Frozen line and Jack's Pacific 24-inch Godzilla figure. Wow. Toy sales tied to a trio of summer blockbusters, Transformers, Spider-Man, and Cap, are off to a sluggish start, one analyst said. This is despite that two of the films, Captain America and Spider-Man, are producing smashing box office results and already ranked number two and three respectively this year. Transformers is not open yet. That's because young boys' toy boxes are already brimming with gear from a host of previous movies filled with the same superheroes, he says. You know, I can see his point on there. Because how many, every year, we get a new Spider-Man line, and I have Spider-Man line, you get 50 Spider-Mans, like, in, per wave. Right. There's like three Spider-Mans in a wave, and, and a villain. And each one is in a different cast. Yeah, and, and you get one villain. But you can't find him in the stores, because he's the only new figure out, so people like us and other collectors... And those scalpers are out there grabbing them up. Right. So the kid is like, the fuck do I want another Spider-Man for? Unless he's playing Clone Saga. You know, it's just like, what's the point? So I, I, I get where maybe, this guy's Maybe the from. kid is playing the Clone Saga. The kid probably doesn't know about the, the Clone, clone Saga. saga. <laughs> um, it says, you've got all these action figures chasing Mindshare, and then they've got all the same backstory and the same characters, like we just said. Uh, every kid already has Spider-Man and Captain America. And he's absolutely right. He really is. And that apparently is the end of that article. See, I told you somebody was going to show up. Um, yeah. So it's just kind of weird in a sense that 
you think at this point Hasbro would realize? I mean, I get you know you see Spider Man, you know Spider Man, he's recognizable, he's marketable. Let's sell it. it it's it's a no brainer, but I think they should do it in smaller portions. As far as the Transformer stuff, there's there's always a huge market for Transformers. People who die hard Transformers fans, right. and that's all like, they collect. Like yourself. Yeah, but it's like. I go from line to line, as most collectors do, but when you put out stuff that looks like crap, they're, they're, regardless no, of what series gonna, it is, yeah, you know? Nobody's going to buy them. Nobody. I mean, it's just like, why? I mean, I get your... You'll have the, the, the select few who, no matter what, will buy them. Like, the ones that I've seen people online buying the most are the Dinobots. Okay. You know, because they're the Dinobots, and you, no matter what, you're still going to buy them. Some guy posted them online, and he had all five of them, and I'm just like, he had them all in robot mode. Like, they look horrible. One of them is painted, like, baby blue and li- uh, neon green. Yeah. One is, I remember one seeing is purple those. and red. One is dark navy blue. And that's exactly what I told you. I said, they don't look good. Grimlock is gold, black, and silver. And, like, what? You know, it just... I don't think they're going to look fruity colored on the screen because from the trailers and the TV spots I've seen, they all look like they're like, look like gray they metallic. Have, yeah, like they have in the other movies. Yeah, so it's like... Why paint the colors, or why paint these toys such fruity colors? It's like somebody threw some splash on them, and yeah, I just don't get it. How'd that go in? Yeah, watch the video. <laughs> I just, I don't get it. You know, I, I really don't understand. Hasbro's burying themselves, unfortunately, with this crap. Um, yeah, because those smaller cap figures, did those, like I said, that cap one, I, yeah. I saw the cap, and I totally bypassed it. It's not as good as the, the Marvel Universe cap yeah. was how that one looked really nice and this one is just it's just yeah eh. well see with the legends i think oh, they, the they were legends. good with that everybody wanted the legends price points too high though especially for a little kid let's say the legends were the only ones available and they decided I, not to go the little kid route right. with the smaller stuff i think those the kids legends. are gonna suffer dude you get what kid you know was running around <coughs> paying twenty dollars a figure half the, the the smaller ones are what like ten bucks and i hear parents like no i'm not paying ten dollars for yeah. that so what makes them think you're gonna pay twenty bucks for a legend if you could even find them i i think the legends ones to be honest with you were geared more to the adult the, collectors, the, of the course. Adult collectors yes, such of course. as us um but you see the numbers on the legends they're impossible to find. I mean, now you can find the Spider-Man Legends and some of the Cap Legends pretty easy. Yeah. You know, because we're, what, like four or five months removed from their releases. But those first two to three months... No. You know, I just barely got a Black Widow. Yeah. You and know, like... That's the only one I'm looking for is Black Widow. You that's, see what I mean? I have all the Spider-Mans, thanks to you, with, with Boomerang. That was the last one I needed. And then, of course, Boomerang you can find all over the place. But my point is, it's like, okay, so... you. I just feel bad for the kids. You know, yeah. I think this is another reason why the kids are off and running towards video games now and stuff. Because they can't find cool toys, you know? And if they, if they like the Marvel Legends, they, those are cool, but the parents aren't going to pay the 20 bucks. Exactly, for if they them. can find it. Or Toys R Us price of $23. 20, $23. Yeah. It is what it is. The next ones that are coming out, the X-Men Legends, those come out the end of June, July, I believe. So no, I the Guardians was the next one. Is it? Well, they're co- well. I know the ex- yeah, well. They're both, I think, coming out at the same time because I know the X Men Legends are going to be Toys R Us exclusive. Okay. First, and then I believe August September they become shared exclusives. And you may find me at the local Toys R Uses. If you're out in the burbs, yeah. he doesn't go to the city, so you guys are all right. But just watch out if you do see him because he's got a big credit card, so you're screwed. You're screwed if you find him at your store. But so, I won't charge scalper prices. Nope, not at all. We don't charge more than twenty percent retail. It's just how it goes, buddies. Um, so, anyways, in closing, Dave, where can they find you? At uh, Facebook, at David A. Bloomquist Jr. It, or you can find me at uh, Classic Glue on Facebook. All right. You looked at me like, yeah. did, I, did I do it right? Did I say yeah. it correctly? Is that where you can really find me? Yeah, but, I guess. Yeah, you can find me. You know, it's a site I'm helping develop where you can check into uh, media, TV, TV shows, and be an ultimate nerd. Yes. Pretty and much. meet other people who are ultimate nerds, too. Yes, they do exist. Like the Eminem commercial. Yes. With the Santa Claus. Yes. Anyways. So, Dave, thank you thank so you. much for being on the show with me, filling uh, the, new, the rotation Maybe. chair with sitting on some uh, previews magazines. It's oh, almost yeah, like a thanks. Book. Yes, I had to, had to boost <laughs> I had to put them out there. Yes, had to bo- boost their seat. Otherwise, I'd be sitting down like this. Yeah, it's true, actually. <laughs> 
So join me next week while I will have another fan on the show. Will it be you? We'll find out. For all things Comics Remix, check out ComicsRemix.com, Spinner Rack, Collector's Corner, Lock Up Wrestling Podcast, Reviews, this show, everything you can find on there is on there. Where we'll be in upcoming appearances, the whole shebang. I'm tired, dude. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm probably about to go toy hunting. <sighs> yes, because I told him about a couple ones that I saw that I didn't pick up and that he needs, and he's yelling at me for not getting them. Stab your ass. <laughs> All right, so guys, thank you again for watching. We'll see you guys next week. Peace.